In this video, I give you a quick breakdown on how I build up this scene here, which I created for my upcoming Blender 2.8 Launchpad course. So enjoy. Hi everyone, Zach Reinhardt here for CGBoost.com and our mission at CGBoost is to help you to learn and understand Blender, create CG art which you can be proud of and eventually make a living with what you are passionate about. And that's why I'm currently working on the Blender 2.8 Launchpad course which will take you from knowing nothing about Blender and 3D in general to create awesome scenes like this here. So this course is especially designed for beginners, but also if you're a bit more advanced and want to make the switch from Blender 2.79 to Blender 2.8, this course will help you. So a few weeks ago, I already published a trailer for this course, which you can check up here or the link in the video description if you haven't watched it already. And we don't have a final release date yet, but we are aiming to release it end of May 2019. It's a comprehensive course, a lot of content to edit, so it takes a little time, but we really want to create a nice package for you guys. Yeah, and if you don't want to miss a release, sign up to the waiting list, link in the video description below or up here. And I thought in order to shorten up the waiting time a bit, I create this video here where I show you a breakdown or an analysis of the scene which we will create in this course. So without further words, let's finally get started. So at first, let's take a look how this scene is built up. So the nice thing here, if I disable all the overlays, this is what we see in the viewport. And this is basically also what will be rendered as final image. Certainly without the flickering of the light effects here. This is just in the viewport, but in the final rendered image, you won't see that. But that's all possible thanks to the new EV real-time render engine, which is available in Blender 2.8. So here I'm using Blender 2.8 beta, which you can download on blender.org, the link you find down below in the video description. And this allows us to have all these nice effects here, like the real-time shadow, which I have here. And we have some other effects. If I disable all the effects here, you can see this is basically the raw scene. Then I have this nice ambient occlusion effect, which I can enable here in the EV render settings, which adds this nice shadow in all the corners. If I disable this, you can see it pretty clearly. And this adds more, let's say, volume to the objects. They basically look a little bit more real. And I think this adds a lot to the quality of the scene. Then we have this nice bloom effect, which adds this glow. But I mainly added this so that I have the nice glow effect on the lamps. So for the lamps, I used emission shaders, pretty strong so that I have this nice glow effect. Then I added the volumetric effect, which adds this nice volume effect to the lamps here, as you can see. And even if we take a look over here, this adds even a volume effect to things like the big mountains over here, which is pretty nice. How I set this up, I will show you in a second. Then if I take a look from the camera perspective, for example, here in the first shot, I then enabled depth of field, which allows us to set a focus point for the camera, which is in focus and the rest is out of focus, basically blurred. And you can even animate this as you can see in the first shot here. First, the background is in focus and then as soon as the car arrives here, the car gets into focus. Then we have screen space reflection, which basically adds better reflection effects, as you can see over here, to add a little bit more realism to the reflections. And I added motion blur, which adds this directional blur to moving objects. And then the whole thing feels a bit faster. So, and as final thing here, under color management, I changed the look from none, I think, to high contrast. So basically we have a higher contrast in the scene. So the colors pop a bit more. And actually this is the final thing which we see in the final rendered image. So after I rendered this scene out, this is what I got. And I don't edit any post-processing after the rendering process, which is really cool since we have live feedback while working on the scene and on the car and on the lighting. Everything we see is also what we got in the end, 
which is fantastic. So for the whole course, we will use this EV real-time render engine. So you will learn everything you need to know about this. So now let's take a look at the lighting since this is connected to all this nice EV effects. As you can see, I added a bunch of spot lamps to the car, which are parented to the car. That means if I rotate the car around, you can see all the lamps are moving along with the car. Then I have added this area lamp, which when I move it around, you can see adds this nice reflection in the front shield here. And also if I move it closer, we also have this highlight of the edge here. So we have this nice rim light, which helps to separate the car a bit more from the background. And then if we take a look into the scene over here, we have this sun lamp, which is placed back here and this is basically generating most part of the lighting here and also the nice shadow. So if I rotate the sun lamp around, you can see how the light is changing. So and then if I disable the volume effect here, we also have this 360 degree image in the background, which I downloaded from hdihaven.com for free. There you can download these images, which also help you to light up your scene globally. So if I would turn this off, you can see the background is just black. You could also color the background in just one color, but with this 360 degree background image, the color of this image basically also lights up our scene. And through the image, we also have this nice mountains in the background, which basically gives us the feel that the scene is much bigger. So, and then I have this atmosphere effect, as you can see, which also hides the mountains a bit so that we don't have two different styles colliding here since the mountains are basically super realistic. And in front here we have this low poly style. So with the fog effect, these two things blend perfectly together in my opinion. So in the volume effect, I simply created with this box here and on this box, I added the principal volume shader with this pinkish color and a low density. And then we have this nice fog effect. So, and now let's take a look at the animation since this is special over here, because if I play back the animation, you can see on the center here, actually the car is not moving. I animated the background. So if I disable the whole background here and play back the animation, you can see the car basically stands still. It's just doing this random movements. And if I enable the background, this is actually what is moving here. And if I zoom back a bit, I set up the background in a certain way. I have four ground planes. All the rocks here I created using hair particles. So in the particle settings, I can enable and disable all these things. In this course, you will learn how to do this in detail. But basically, I prepared a bunch of models and then using the particles, I can distribute them onto the surface randomly and using the weight paint mode, I can also define a bit closer where these rocks and the grass should be. For example, as you can see here, the grass is only in the center, the smaller rocks as well. Then the trees are also closer to the center, but I took care that everything here in the center is free so that the car can basically fly through the whole environment here. So let's quickly disable the smaller particles so that the playback here is a bit smoother. And let's select this plane over here, this ground plane and scrub through the timeline. And you can see at some point this jumps back to the beginning. So basically I have this four ground planes because I don't want to have this unlimited huge background with millions of objects because this would slow down the performance even more. And in this way, I set it up that in the far distance where we basically can't see the ground anymore, it's jumping back to the beginning and starts again. And the cool thing here is that in this way I can play back the animation infinite. So I can decide how long I want to make the animation and I'm totally free to play around with the cameras to fly around this car here in the center. So the car always stands still here. So it's also way easier to animate the cameras around the car since we don't need to follow the car while it's moving somewhere into the distance. So, and basically for the ground, I just added two keyframes, one at the start position and one at the end position over here. And then if we switch over to the animation workspace, you can see this basically is the animation from here to here of this ground plane. So basically here it starts 
then it's moving over here. And then you can see this sudden change to this position. And here it basically starts again. And this repetitive animation here, I did not create it manually. I simply added a modifier to this animation curve, which is called the cycles modifier, which basically simply repeats the existing animation over and over again. And the same thing I did for the other grounds. So for the car, I did a similar thing. Basically, I added a keyframe for position and rotation. And then on this channels over here, I added a noise modifier to add this random movement. And this I did for all the locations and also for the rotations. And if I play back the animation, you can see the car is moving randomly. Same thing I did for the nozzles over here. And even if I enable the rendered viewport shading, I did this for the fire down here. But in this case, I only added this random movement to the scaling of the X axis. So basically this one here. So through this noise modifier, this thing is doing this random movement and then it looks like we have this moving fire. So everything is very simple if you know how it was created and it's basically complete procedural. That means it runs infinite. I can play back the animation as long as I like. And then I animated this three cameras around here. So this here is the final scene we are creating in this course with three different shots here. And as you can see down here, you can also select cameras and simply add a bind camera to marker down here, then this marker will be added. And in this way, you can basically edit your video live in Blender by changing the cameras, which is really, really cool. Yeah, and in this way, I created the scene. One final word to the shaders and materials. In my opinion, texturing, UV mapping and all this stuff is a more advanced topic. So we don't dive deep into that in this course here. And I wanted to show that you can create nice looking environments and objects also using very simple materials. And here on the car, for example, I only used simple diffuse or principal shaders without any textures. So as you can see over here, these are just very simple principal shaders with plain colors. For the lights, I used emission shaders, as you can see here. And in order to add the nice rust effect or the scratches, I simply went into edit mode. And with the knife tool, I added a bunch of cuts. And then I basically colored the faces with different materials. And I think this edgy look here also supports this low poly look, which I was aiming for for this scene here. So even with very simple materials and shading, you can create very nice looking scenes, as you can see here. So yeah, and then I rendered this out. One image rendered roughly for 10 to 12 seconds. I used a resolution of 2560 by 1080, 25 frames per second. And you can see the animation is 750 frames long. So you can calculate how long it took me to render this scene. If I would have used cycles for rendering this scene, this would probably have taken, I don't know, weeks to render if I would have rendered this on my machine. So this EV real-time render engine helps a lot to quickly render out your scene. I think also for people which just want to tell a little story, create little animations with Blender. This EV render engine is really, really nice to don't have this infinite render times. Yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of this scene here. Let me know in the comment section below if you are excited for this course, because I am. I'm really looking forward to share this course with you guys. And yeah, don't forget to put your name onto the waiting list, link in the video description below, if you don't wanna miss the release of this course. Yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Like this video if you like, subscribe to this channel and ring the bell if you love my content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.